Hey guys, and welcome back to episode 2 of Divine Journey 2. Last episode we set up some basic farms. We also built our Tinker Smeltery, and I've been letting this run in. I actually did go mining between the episodes, and we have a ton of resources in here. So hopefully this should be enough to start us off today. Although I have a feeling I might have to go mining again. We also took a look at Totemic, and we're almost finished that chapter. So we left off last time by making the eagles by transmuting some parrots. I did breed those guys again uh, with some salmon and we have the rest of the things we need to progress. So we were missing one feather, one bone, and we needed those to make the eagle bone whistle, which I think is our final musical instrument. And this we can use, I think, for the maximum tier of ceremonies. And speaking of ceremonies, the next quest is a boss fight, apparently, called Baycock. So we have to perform the Totentans ritual to summon Baycock. And we are not really prepared to be fighting bosses, we, we just have this obsidian armour. We did get this bow that we fished up, so we'll make use of this, but we are going to try and cheese this thing. So I want to trap this guy if possible. The quest does mention that you can set up some sort of hidey hole, and he can activate buttons, trap doors, or break blocks. So we're going to make use of this, I think. Alright, so we have a little makeshift tidy hole built here. <laughs> I'm just going to trap myself in, I think. Or try to trap him. I don't actually know what the spawning rules for this guy is, so... Let's consult the Totempedia. So we want Totentans, which is... Wind Chime and the Eagle Bone Whistle. And this is a five-note ceremony. So I'm not sure if we'll be able to get this first time. Let's just give it a go, though. Wind Chime, Bone Whistle. Oh, we just missed it. Oh, are we going to get it this time? I think we got it. Alright, we need to prepare for this guy. I don't have a clue where he's going to spawn. Oh, he's somewhere. I hear him. Where is he? I think he's behind me on the map. Oh, yeah. Alright, how do we hit this guy? Aha, there he is. He keeps moving. We really need. I really should have built this where he was standing up a block. And I'm out of arrows here. Oh, this might be a long fight. <laughs> I don't have a sword either. I, I, we did actually get this magical boomerang from a quest reward. Oh, that's the eagle. I don't want to hit you. Oh no, he killed my eagle. Oh no. <laughs> I'm just about dead here as well. Well, I hope we don't need more eagles. Yeah, I really didn't make this too easy for myself, did I? Last it. One more. There we go. We got him. Oh, I'm sad about my eagle though. We only have one left now. Alright, well, he dropped his bow, an orange heart, and a skeleton skull. And I think we need this bow to progress. Yeah, we need to make the Root of the Fallen and some Bloodied Stone. And we also get a choice of Infinity or Insight. And I think, again, I'm just going to leave these quest rewards here for later on. But that more or less completes Chapter 2, and we have unlocked 3 and 4. So we can either do Roots or Immersive Engineering. But I'm leaning towards Immersive Engineering, since I would like to get the Coke Ovens and Blast Furnaces going, since they take a long time. So to start Immersive, we need to make some of this Bloodied Stone, which is some Obsidian, the bow that we just got, and Coagulated Blood. <laughs> Which I think for now is easy, it's just made in smeltery, either with rotten flesh, or I think we can actually hop in this. Hold on, do we have anything in here right now? We do, there's quite a lot. Uh, yeah, let me empty this out actually, it's going to be a bit easier. Alright, so I got the smeltery mostly empty, I did throw some rotten flesh in there, which gave us 200 millibuckets. I'm not sure how much it is per coagulated blood, but we just have to pour it on the blank cast. And we're going to need quite a lot of these things. Um, how much did that take off? 160 I guess, for one co coagulated blood. Well, since I don't have any more rotten flesh, we can actually just take a little dip in our smeltery. And this will start putting blood in slowly, but it's the only way we've got for now. The quest does give us a potion of regen, so I'm going to make use of this thing. So this might actually take a while. We need to make quite a lot of these bricks as they're used as part of the coke ovens. And also the blast bricks for the blast furnace. And from what I've heard, we actually need a few of these things. So uh, yeah, we've got a lot of blood to make. So there's the first eight to get our regen potion. And hopefully this will make things a little bit easier. Hold on, why aren't we burning? Do we need to have something in there? I think maybe we do. Oh, that might have been a waste of regen. 
So I've been donating lots and lots of blood, <laughs> almost passed out, but we have 48 of Baycock's bloodied stone. Next up we have to make the engineer's hammer. Man, these cyclops are everywhere. I can't even want to get rid of this guy. Alright, he's leaving on his own, that's fine. So there's our engineer's hammer. And one more trophy for our collection. Let's claim our manual and build our blast bricks and coke bricks. So we need 27 of each. This is going to take some osmium and bricks for the coke ovens. And the blast bricks is invar and bricks. Okay, so how do we get invar then? Invar is nickel and iron. We should have some nickel. I remember picking up some of this. Yeah, we do. We're also going to need some more clay for bricks. Which is appearing to be not the easiest thing to come by with all these different variants of sand and stone and whatnot in the ground. Alright, so we got enough materials for two coke ovens. We're going to start with these for now. I think we'll end up adding more though. And these are 3x3 three three each, so it's 27 blocks per coke oven. There's our quest. We also did get some invar, so we can make our blast bricks as well. And for now we only have enough bricks for one of the blast furnaces. Not even one, actually. Alright, there's the rest of them. So I think I'm going to set these up over in this little square. And by the way, all of this stuff that you're seeing is all temporary. I do have a plan for the base and it's going to be probably, we're going to start building it over there, but it's going to take some time to get some, some infrastructure, some tools, and obviously some building materials. So for now, this is all going to be temporary just to get us some progression through the pack. So you just have to create a 3x3. I'm going to lift it one block off the ground. Then you hit it with the engineer's hammer, it forms the multi-block. And then we're going to put coal in here and we'll get our coal coke out of the other side. Alright, so we have our two coke ovens and one blast furnace. So the reason that we want these is to have access to steel. So steel is made with iron and the way to power the blast furnace is with coal coke. So we have uh, a decent amount of coal. It's nowhere near enough though. If I recall, we actually want to be using coal blocks. Yeah, so we're going to be using blocks of coal to turn into coal coke. And this process does take a while, which is why I have two of these things. And we're also going to get creosote oil out of here, which we'll want to we'll want to keep. And the quest does give us some materials that we can use to extract this creosote oil. So we're going to make use of this by placing a tank and a fluid duct, as well as a servo. I guess we'll need another servo for the other one. But we set this to ignored mode, and that should put all the creosote oil in this tank. Let me quickly grab another servo for that other one. Alright, we got the other servo. And I'm also going to place another tank, just to have a little bit more buffer for creosote. And I believe we can also automate this further by placing a chest with some hoppers underneath. And this should automatically pull out the coal coke for us. And I think I'll do the same on top for inserts as well. So unlike the coke ovens, we can't actually automate this crude blast furnace. We have to upgrade it first. Which requires us to be all the way over here. But next we need some hemp, which we've been growing since episode 1. Which gives us some bone meal. And to progress we need treated wood, which is made with the creosote oil we get from the coke ovens over there. So the first pieces of coal just finished in our coke ovens, which gave us 9 buckets of creosote oil. And by the way, thank you King for your comment, recommending that I change the whaler settings to show the fluid amounts in tanks. So with our blocks of coal coke, we can put these in our blast furnace along with some iron ingots and I think each block of coal coke can smelt 10 iron ingots into steel. And again, this is a long process and we need lots and lots of steel. But with our creosote oil, we can use some wood and craft this into treated wood. And we get a diamond saw for that. And as you can see here, we also get a byproduct of slag. I'm not sure exactly how useful this thing is at the moment, but we'll keep it around. Uh, I don't think there's any, like I said, there's no way to take this out automatically yet. So we're going to have to manually empty this out, otherwise it stops running. But there is our first steel ingot. Is that the quest? No, we need four. Okay. But because these things are so slow, I think what I'm going to do is actually make, build another set of this. Maybe even another two sets. So another four coke ovens and two more blast furnaces. Which sounds a bit crazy, but I don't know. I'm going to do some farming, probably mine up some more coal as well, since we don't have any more after putting it all in the blast furnaces. And we'll come back when we have enough materials to progress.
Alright, so it's now been quite some time later, I've been doing some mining, resource collection and crafting. We now have two more coke ovens, I did shift some things around here just so it sits a little bit nicer within the chunk. And I changed the hoppers for the extraction for item conduits which we got from the quest reward. Then we have the same setup with the tanks in between the coke ovens. And I should probably add a trash can to void the excess creosote oil. As uh, if these fill up, it will actually stop running and we don't want that. I'd rather just void the creosote and keep the coal coke. But yeah, we, we have quite a bit of steel by now. We're up to about a stack and a half. And as you've seen, I also built these water wheels, which is generating us some power. We're currently not doing anything with that power, but that's going to be the next stage for us. And I also want to just show you guys something like, look how crazy this recipe is, right? So the kinetic dynamos is what we connect to the water wheels to transfer the power. Each one of these copper coil blocks takes 8 LV wire coils, which takes 4 copper wire. So each one of these kinetic dynamos takes 2 stacks of copper and 12 steel ingots, which is very expensive for this stage of the game. But we have some basic power, let's put it to use. So for the next parts of the quest, I would like to get some metal presses to be able to get cheaper plates. And that requires us to make the engineer's workbench. So there is our workbench. This does take some of the treated wood that we made from the cruise oil. Next we need some of the blueprints, which takes more steel. So it was like this, right? Yeah, metal press molds. Oh nice, it gives us two steel back. And we'll also make the crafting components blueprint. So to make our metal presses, we need these mechanical components, which we make in the engineer's workbench along with the blueprints we just crafted. So there's the steel component, or maybe not. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, there we go. And the iron components. And this unlocks our metal press, which is exactly what we want. This allows us to make plates and rods and also wires, I think. So we're going to want a couple of these things eventually, but this is a multi-block which takes a piston, some conveyor belts, which is... Uh, oh, this is more treated leather. Oh, I remember this recipe. <laughs> uh, redstone engineering block. Uh, this doesn't look too bad, actually. The heavy engineering block, which takes the mechanical components we just made. Some electrum. I think we got some electrum from a quest reward. Uh, more steel, though. And, of course, the piston recipe has been changed. All right. And some steel scaffolding as well. But, yeah, these things definitely aren't cheap, especially in the early game here. Well, there is our redstone engineering block, some pistons, the scaffolding, and some more treated leather. And thank you, by the way, for the comment letting me know you could use the portable tank and not just the bucket. And that lets us make some conveyor belts. Uh, I'm going to make a couple of these things. And the last part for the metal press is the heavy, heavy engineering block. So let's see if I remember how to build these things. It's been a while. Is it like this? I think we have to rotate the piston, though. Do we swap the engineering blocks? Ah, there we go. Yeah, there is our first metal press. Nice, so to get this to work, we obviously need to hook up some power here. And we'll also need a plate mold for this. You're being very loud here. That's better. To hook up some of the power, we're going to use these LV wire connectors. As well as some LV wire coils. And we're going to put our connectors on top of the metal press. And another one on the kinetic dynamos. And then just hook them up with some wire. Haha, <laughs> take that zombie. And yeah, we do have to be careful of these wires. These are uninsulated wires, so we do take damage from these. But making the wire coils and connectors gives us some extra ones for free, as well as these wire cutters. And we need the wire cutters to make some of the plate molds, which apparently takes five steel plates. Wow, that is expensive. And at this point, I want to make as few plates as possible using the, the manual way this way. But now we have access to our plate mold. We can put it on the metal press, and now we can throw our ingots into the metal press, and this is going to give us plates one-to-one, -one, which is amazing. Looks like it is standard speed for the metal press, though. In packs like Enigmatica 2, this thing was sped up in the configs, which made it amazing. In fact, I think it was even better than some of the, the mid-game machines for making plates. But this is all we've got for now, and at least it's more efficient than doing it manually. Now that we have access to making plates like this, I'm going to actually set up a few more metal presses. I'd like to get one for gears, rods, and wires. Although the wires actually take plates, it's not just from ingots to wires. Which means that it may be worth setting up two back to back. One for ingots to plates, and then plates to wires. I'm not sure we'll have enough resources for that though. But we can also hook up some chests for the output, and the hopper for the input. And batch craft a whole lot of plates, which I'm going to use to turn into wires and make some energy storage for these water wheels. 
So I was just going to make the LV capacitor, but I noticed that we can actually upgrade this to MV, which with some extra electrum, and then also to HV, just with some silver and lead. Alright, so we got the capacitor in place. I've made some changes to this as well. So on the inputs, we have LV wire connectors on both of the kinetic dynamos, and those go to a relay, since with the connectors, you can't connect more than two connections at once. So by connecting it to a relay, that means we can have them all in a central point. And then that goes into the input of the capacitor, which holds, what, 4 million IF? Yeah, I think that's 4 million. And then uh, I have this one set to output, and for the output we're actually using MV wire connectors. And these allow a little bit more throughput, as I think the LV ones are limited to 2048. Yeah, the MV ones can transport up to 8192. Obviously we're not producing that much, but since we have en an energy buffer, Whenever we require more energy, we uh, have more throughput with the MV wires. And the MV wire connectors aren't any more expensive really than the LV ones. But the MV wire itself does take some electrum rather than copper. But I think it's worth making the switch. So next I think I'm going to uh, batch craft a bunch of materials using this press. And I think we'll add three more. Oh, come on, zombies, give me a break. <laughs> and these are angry zombies as well. How is there so many of them? Alright, so we got another, what, five metal presses here. Unfortunately, we don't have enough steel yet. This thing is way too slow, so I think we're going to speed that up next. But as I mentioned, I set this one up back to back. This is going to be for the wires, which have to be from plates and then into wire. This one here is for rods. This one is for gears and then plates as the first one. So yeah, all this crafting is very, very expensive. We're basically out of everything. <laughs> but yeah, the next thing I'd like to do is speed up our steel production, which requires the improved blast furnace. This is locked behind this mold quest though, which wants us to make the gear molds. This takes five steel plates. I don't know if we have five steel yet. Oh yeah, we do. Let's quickly make some more plates. So that has unlocked our next quest, which is to make some reinforced blast bricks. And unfortunately to do that though, I didn't realise this actually takes some more steel plates. So we have to tear down this blast furnace and combine every brick here with steel, which requires, what, 27 steel ingots? So yeah, that's going to take some time. I actually found some more steel scaffolding in one of the chests. I must have left it in there. That'll allow us to make these two metal presses at least. Not that we can run all of these with the power we're generating. So we're going to have to come up with some better power gen quite soon, but uh, there's too many things to do right now. So, in the meantime, while we're waiting on steel, let's actually go back and have a look at this Roots mod. I'm really interested in this, and I think it'll allow us to automatically farm crops, and it gives us a bunch of cool effects and spells and things as well. So, yeah, to get started, we need the Root of the Fallen, which takes Baycock's bow and some Wild Root. Earlier on, when I was mining, I did actually plant some of this Wild Root, as I noticed in the quest that it can be planted. So we combine this with the bow, and this gives us our Root of the Fallen. And is the first quest in our Roots chapter. So it gives us the, the book, I imagine, for Roots. I'm going to be using that a lot since I don't really know what I'm doing here. So the next quest is to get some Terra Moss. And to get Terra Moss, we need to use an, a knife of some sort and strip off Mossy Cobblestone. And I did find some of this over the Magical Forest. Yeah, Marble ma Mossy Cobble, this is what we're after. So we'll grab a knife. I hope this works with this variant on the Underground's Biomes variant. Let's try turning it into regular Moss Stone. Maybe this works instead. Oh yeah, and that gives us our Terra Moss. Alright, how much of this stuff do we need? Oh, we need some Terra Spores as well. We might have some of that in here somewhere. Yeah, there's the quest. So the next part is to get some bark. And to get bark, it looks like we need to use the knife on some oak wood. So do we just uh, right click? Left click? Oh, we just break the logs, okay. And it gives us another knife for that. So next we need to craft the pyre. And this I think is the, yes, yeah, the central crafting mechanic of roots. So this uses some of the bloodied stone, the bark, the root of the fallen, and terra moss. So it puts everything together. And this thing is a bit like the runic altar from Batania. And it seems like it's used quite a lot in this pack. So there is our pyre. And a trophy. So the next thing we need is charred stone. And to use this we, I believe, need a flint and steel to activate the pyre. And it gives us three more for free, so I'll I'll take that. So I believe we just have to right click on the ingredients. So it's three stone, one oak bark, one terra moss. 
And we light it up. Oh nice, that's a cool effect. And we can sneak right click to repeat it as well. Which is quite nice, similar to Batania. So to progress and get access to some of these spells, we have to do the Imbuer. Which we can do at this point. But we also are going to need this staff. And I was checking out the recipe for the staff. We need some more blocks of garnet. A block of opal and some amethyst. But I don't quite have enough garnets or amethysts. But we do have some opal here that we can use. So that means I'm going to have to go mining again. Plus we're all of this crafting today has wiped us out of resources. So to make mining a bit easier, I think I want to actually upgrade our tools. And we should also invest in a sword for all these zombies as well. But rather than making more alumite tools, I think I want to actually get access to some manulin or cobalt and ardite from the nether. And we have access to steel for the flint and steel, and I imagine the portal to gain access to the nether is default. Let's find out. Alright, let's see what awaits us in the nether. Alright, so... Seems like a fairly safe place for a portal, at least we're not over lava. Aha, we got the quest. It seems quite low down as well for a portal. We're at Y32. What's this? Sensenacite? I have no idea what this is used for. We got some lapis ore here. And glowstone. Quite a lot of glowstone actually. Oh, and there's some diamond ore here as well. Interesting. And some ardite. Let's grab some of this for our tools. I want to find some cobalt as well. Oh, this lava is new. Must have poured down after the world generated. Alright, let's also mark the portal. Oh nice, some cobalt. What is that noise as well? I have no idea what that is. Oh, there's even some iron ore that generates here as well. I wonder if this is more worth uh, to go mining in the nether rather than haven in the overworld. Yeah, we are after this cobalt though. And I wonder, do we get ore doubling with the cobalt and ardite as well? Oh, we do, nice, okay. Oh, hello, creeper. I don't think I want to find out how that explodes. Yeah, very unique nether here. Oh, some draconium. Oh, cool. I don't know how useful this is at this point in the game, though. Oh, yeah, I think he's coming for us. I don't really want to hit him, though. I don't want to aggro everyone else. Some blood gem ore. I think the, um, the cyclops actually dropped these things. Oh, we can make uh, tools with this. Oh, singularity. <laughs> oh, great. Yeah, that's for much, much later on, the Singularity stuff. Oh, you're back, Pigman, you're back. Ow. Okay, I didn't have a choice there. <laughs> Hopefully no other Pigman was in range. Oh, we got a quest. I guess it was for picking up this agave. Alright, my tools broke and my inventory filled up, so I'm going to melt some of this cobalt and ardite, and we'll make our new pickaxe and probably a sword as well. So we're going to do manual and pickaxe head. And I actually want to try out using a copper rod, which is what we have on, on our axe here and the alumite pickaxe. And the reason for this is I want the well-established trait, which you gain extra EXP for breaking blocks. And the reason for that is we're going to combine it with mending moss to put mending on our tools. So to get mending moss, we need a bookshelf and the ball of moss. We also need 10 levels, so I need some way of extracting from this tank. Oh, we can actually just right click. All right, so that's our 10 levels. And then we have to right click the ball of moss, it consumes the 10 levels and gives us the mending moss modifier. So let's make our pickaxe with the manual in, the copper rod and a paper binding. And now we'll add our mending moss to give it mending. And how many modifiers do we still have? We still have another three, okay. So I think I'll actually put some redstone and some lapis. So the redstone will give it haste, more mining speed. And the lapis gives it luck or fortune. Alright, so that's a much better pickaxe to go mining with. And I would also like a weapon of some sort. And for this we have a few different options. We can go for a longsword, a broadsword, a shuriken maybe? Maybe a shuriken could be cool. Let me have a look through this actually and decide which weapon we're going to pick. So I think we will actually go for the shuriken. And this does require the tool forge. Which means we have to upgrade our tool station. And I'm going to use iron for this since it's what I have the most of. So for the shuriken we need just four knife blades. So I think we're going to go for this combo, and the Electrum one as the shocking trait, which as you're running around or breaking blocks, it basically charges up your tool, and then whenever you hit an enemy, it discharges, dealing extra damage. So we got an Electrum, Bone, Copper, Manual, and Shuriken. It's pretty fun to mess around with this stuff. 
and I don't think this is going to be the most optimal tool. In fact, it probably definitely isn't. But it's fun just messing around trying to come up with different combos. But I think it's going to do us just fine. And again, we'll put Mending Moss on this just to keep it topped off. And just so that we have a melee weapon, I'm going to use some of these blood gems that we got from the Cyclops to make a blood gem sword. And we also had just enough material for us to make two plates, a hammerhead, and I'm going to use a paper to tough tool rod. And this is going to be to make our hammer. And this lets us mine out 3x3 three three areas. Actually, the durability on this thing isn't great. Uh, yeah, I'm going to swap out the paper tough rod with a copper one just to get the more EXP as well. And again, we'll add the mending moss. So with our new tools, I think I'm going to go mining once again to pick up some of the opal and what was it, amethyst that we needed to continue our progression in roots. But before we go mining, we just managed to get up to enough steel to upgrade our blast furnace so we can combine our blast bricks with the steel plates to give us the reinforced. And the quest will give us a hopper with some iron chests. This version of the blast furnace, we can actually automate the inputs and outputs, which is going to be nice. And to make this faster, we can also ha add these preheaters, which consume RF, but it will improve the production speed of the improved blast furnace. So to make these, we need a bunch of sheet metal, which is some iron plates and ingots, and one of these external heaters, which is another one of these copper coil blocks. But luckily, these things are a lot cheaper now that we have our uh, presses over there. And because we added the capacitor, it means that we can run multiple of these machines at once. So I'm just batch crafting a bunch of copper plates, uh, some iron rods, and some more copper wire. So there is the two preheaters. And for the time being, I'm going to move our blast furnace closer to our power generation, since these wires from immersive engineering only stretch for so long. I think they only go 16 blocks. So this is just built exactly the same way, except you need a hopper on top. And then we place our two preheaters on the sides. We have to hook these up with some power, so we'll give them their own wire connectors on each one. And connect these up to our relay. Alright, so input is going to go into the top, the steel output is going to be put in this chest out the front, and then out the back we get the slag output. And actually I'm going to swap out all the inputs and outputs with drawers. And we still have some item conduits here, so I believe you have to actually use a hopper or an item conduit, this won't extract from inventories. So we're going to put our iron in this drawer, and that's going to put it into the top slot of the blast furnace. And again we'll swap out this chest with a drawer. Alright, so yeah, as you can see this is much much quicker steel production. And in fact, I don't even know if these blast, if these coke ovens are enough to keep up. Also, this sword helps a lot. <laughs> it's infinite durability and it can two-shot the zombies, so... Oh wow, we're already up to 36 more coal coke. Man, I've wasted a lot of time today. <laughs> Alright, let's fill this thing full with iron and then I'm going to go mining for those resources we need. Oh yeah, these tools are so much easier to mine with. I also put silk touch on our hammer here. And this is going to be useful for mining blocks like basalt. I don't think I'm going to use basalt, but uh, like mining materials, I want to use marble in our base. So the silk touch plus the vein miner means we can collect a bunch of building materials from underground now. Alright, I would say that's not such a bad haul. We got some more amethysts, garnets, and some more opals. Let's clean up this inventory a bit. Alright, so to progress in roots, we need one of these grove stones, which takes some of the buffalo and eagle bones. I hope we actually have enough of these things. We do, we have one left. Alright, so there's the grove stone. We also have to make a mortar and pestle, which requires us to use this charge stone that we made on the pyre earlier on. And next up, I want to be Gandalf. <laughs> so we need to make our staff with the opal and amethyst. Aha, we got our staff. You can be Gandalf now. And we get a choice over between diamonds or redstone. I guess I'll take the diamonds. Although we have plenty of diamonds now after mining. We're up to 49. And the last thing I'd like to finish off with today is to get the Sky Storer, Storer Utility spell. And with this, I don't think it's Creative Flight. Uh, it's more like Elytra from what I understand. But you can dash ahead into the air with right click. This sounds awesome. I want to get this. So to make this, we need Cloudberry, Bone Mushroom Spores, Living Arrow. Okay, this is a lot of stuff. Mm. Alright, how do we make the Living Arrow? This is Wildwood Bark, which we need Wildwood Logs. Ah, okay, this is going to require some rituals. Maybe this is further away than what I thought. And we need to find some bone mushroom spores in the nether, it looks like. And even more pyre, pyre crafting. Yeah, so I think actually we're going to leave this for next episode. I checked the time on this and we're running a little bit long today. But we made some really decent progress. We have our steel automated, we got the improved blast furnace, some basic power, a couple of metal presses for all the components we need. And we got four coke ovens. And of course we also have much better tools, so this makes mining so much easier. 
and yeah overall i'm just ha i'm having a blast with this pack already and we're only just getting started so yeah <laughs> that's gonna do it for today thank you again for watching and i'll see you tomorrow for some more divine journey 2